It says, if you don't pay immediately, on this date, you have to appear in court. <laughs> the reality of the situation struck me. <laughs> My wife had to go to court. <laughs> we showed up the next day. She was trembling. They let all the criminals in. A whole chain of them, all chained together, and they stuck them behind the fence. And then Mrs. Gates sat right here. We all sat there. And, of course, the judge just threw a, a little white cap on. The hair was kind of hanging off the side. And, and he was sitting there, and he went through everything, and finally he goes, Mrs. Rebecca Gates? And I started to go to the police, and I said, no, that's her. She goes out by herself. So I had to sit there and watch my wife stand up there, and there's a little fence that you got to stand in front of the judge. And she stood there, and, and uh, the judge took out this piece of paper that was supposed to be the thing that the, was written out by the policeman and said, Mrs. Gates, you have violated the law. Yes, Your Honor. You are accused of... Your Honor, I'm accused of silence. You can't accuse yourself. <laughs> he turned to the, the prosecuting attorney and said, uh, can you read that? Where's the policeman who wrote this? He's not here today, Your Honor. Mrs. Gates... We are unable to read the charges against you. <laughs> you are therefore cleared of all charges. You can leave. But, but, Your Honor, where do I pay? You don't have to pay anything. You're cleared of all charges. And suddenly, I understood a little bit better what God does for us. Because she was innocent. I was the guilty party. But she had to be charged for my negligence. And she had to stand there, and she could not accuse herself. In fact, nobody who is accused can even defend themselves. You have to have somebody else who is a witness stand and verify that you are innocent. And she stood there, and God's mercy was, wipe it clear. And when Satan stands before us accusing us, because he's the accuser, the accuser of the brethren, the judge is going to say, I can't read anything. It's all stained in red. Somebody must have spilled some blood on this. It's Jesus' blood that covers out all our sins. And he says, you're not charged with anything. You can leave. You're innocent. What a beautiful picture of the cost of salvation. It's free to us, but it was very, very expensive to purchase. And G God is the accused. God the Father is accused, and he cannot defend himself. You say... Well, come on, God can do anything. No, it's just that it, you cannot ever defend yourself. Somebody else has to defend you. And God, incredibly enough, needs to be saved from the accusations of the enemy. Because when he said, you're unfair, you're not a God of love, when Jesus died on a cross and stretched his hands out, at that moment... Justice and love kissed each other. And the whole universe knew that God was love and God was just. Because if God could have changed the law, his character, he could have saved the life of his son. He could have said, why don't we just change the law and that way he doesn't have to die. But God cannot change the law because that is his character. And he doesn't change his character just because there's an emergency. He has to live with the consequences. So... His son said, I'll take it. And Jesus came to earth, lived a perfect life, died innocently for us, and at that moment we saw justice and we saw love at the same time. But Satan doesn't give up that easily. Satan continues to accuse God by saying the following. Maybe Jesus could do it, but I would like to see men do it. If you say he's a perfect example, then why aren't the people doing it too? And this is the great controversy. And God is looking for a people who 
live what they preach through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit, who are, ha, share the love and passion for souls, and who are willing to go out and place themselves, you might say, on the cross, pick up your cross and follow me, and say, whatever it takes, Lord, you have all of me. Whatever it takes. You have all of me. Use me to save souls. And I, as the crisis deepens and people are threatened with not trusting God, God is looking for people that will say, trust God anyway. So he, he sits at the judgment and he says, I would like to see if indeed you think like I do. Do you take care of your neighbors, those that are hungry, those that are sick? Do you, do you give your life in service to others like I gave my life? I don't know, but before I go into the meat of the sermon, I was faced with something this morning that was brought to my mind, and I want to read it to you. My favorite little military intelligence war manual is called Christian Service. It says, God, page, page 258, God gives opportunities. Success depends on the use made of them. Okay? It comes from Prophet and Kings, page 486. God gives opportunities. Success depends on how we utilize our opportunities. God doesn't just throw success at you. He just lets an opportunity pass, and he waits to see your reaction. It could be an opportunity to serve, like I mentioned last night, to help send somebody to the mission field, support somebody there, to go yourself, to support evangelistic series, to support the Adventist education like we did this morning. A lot of ways, opportunities. But I saw an opportunity this morning. I saw those little children up front. And did you know that souls are directly related to your pocketbook? Did you know that? Money is equivalent to souls. So money invested in helping people always results in salvation of somebody. And can you imagine how happy heaven is when God's people finally figure that out? And they finally realize, I have been given the privilege of investing my time and resources into souls. And when heaven is happy, heaven will make sure that you always are successful in your work. Heaven is not unhappy with people when they sacrifice too much. Heaven is indignant with people today, with God's people especially, because they know time is short. They know God loves souls, and yet they take care of their own needs first. And so I saw an opportunity this morning. I saw an opportunity, and uh, I was reading in Luke 6, 38. Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. It doesn't even say God will give it to you. It says men will give it back to you. If you just give, men will return it right back. It's a principle. Uh, Bill Gates used to be the richest man in the world. He decided one day that making money wasn't so much fun. Well, actually, he was under attack. He was, be, he was being represented by the media as a terrible person, and he decided to change his image. So he probably came up with this, with this marketing maneuver. Why don't we give away some of the money, and then we'll look good? So he came up with a plan. Let's set aside $30 billion just to give away for world health. And everybody will not talk bad about us anymore. He thought it was probably a smart idea. He did not know what he was getting himself into. Because as soon as he set aside $30 billion, he put somebody as chairman, uh, uh, CEO, chief executive officer of Microsoft, and he began to do it. He began to discover how much fun it is to give money away. In fact, he, he permanently resigned from his job so that he could spend the rest of his life giving money away. Now, the Bible says, given it shall be given unto you. Does this apply to Bill Gates too? Absolutely. It applies to everybody. It's a, it's a principle of the universe. All of the his eternity will be spent in receiving and giving, receiving and giving. Actually, here it says give first and then receive. So Bill Gates decided to put aside $30 billion. Well, let's apply the principle to him. His friend Warren Buffett came over to visit one day. <laughs> and Bill said, you know what, Warren? 
I've just found out what I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm going to travel around the world and I'm going to give away money to those that are in need. And he showed pictures. I don't know if I have a, one of those pictures here. Let's see. Um, 